How important is your website as a photographer at this point in time as we look towards 2023? Are, are blogs still relevant anymore? There's all these social media and social network platforms that are out there. How do they fit into things? Does it make your website obsolete? Does it matter anymore what blog or website platform you're using for your online presence? Let's take a look at these issues. I'm gonna break it down, give you three things that I think every photographer should be considering and set you on a path for success moving forward in this ever-shifting online world. Hey there, Aaron here from techphotoguy.com and let's talk photography websites. A little disclaimer or non-disclaimer up front, uh, this video is not sponsored in any way. I'm not getting compensated to either talk about or not talk about anything that comes up here. Although some of the things I will link down below are affiliate links and I get a little bit of commission if you click through those and buy something. Let's take a fresh look at photography websites as we approach the new year, as we roll into 2023, because, you know, the web's been around for quite a while. Heck, I've been talking about the web for photographers for quite a while, and some of the things that were great advice five years ago, 10 years ago, I mean, honestly, even two or three years ago, might not be so relevant anymore, and it doesn't make sense to be following old stale advice when it comes to your website. Now, to answer the first obvious question, should you have a website? Yes, I think you should. And we're going to dive into uh, some specific reasons for that in just a moment. But, you know, the main reason why a website should be your online home is that it can be your home base. It's something that can remain while social networks come and go. Facebook was once a big playground for photographers. We drove all our clients there. We got them to like and like our page. And then Facebook shifted its model and became pay to play. At this point, you're not going to be reaching new people on Facebook if you're not paying for advertising. Instagram, another social network that we loved as photographers because it was photocentric. Instagram in the last year or so has made a big shift where they're really emphasizing video at this point. We're seeing an increase in the advertising. Again, it's shifting towards more of a pay to play model. You know, so Facebook, Instagram, Twitter is in quite a tumultuous period right now. As I record this, Elon Musk uh, closed his sale of Twitter just in the last couple of weeks. Everybody's trying to figure out what that's going to mean for the company, what changes are coming, what changes aren't coming. And so as we see all these social networks come and go and shift and change, those social networks change based on the business models of those social networks. They're not necessarily aligned with our goals as photographers who want to show off our work, who want to be found by new people on the internet, and who want to, you know, turn that into photography business or publicity for our photography ventures. So let's talk about three key things when it comes to your photo website. So the first thing is that it is kind of your online home. It is your destination. You can purchase a domain name, you know, yournamephotography.com or whatever that might be. And that domain name is yours to own. You can point that domain name in different places over time, but that domain name remains the same. It can be used for your email, you can put it on a business card, you can put it in advertising. That's your address on the internet. And regardless of what you're doing on the internet, what platform you're using, what services you're using, that domain name can point to your online home. Now, I like Namecheap as a domain registrar that's served me well over the years, but there's a bunch of other great ones out there. What can you put on your online home? So there's a few things that I think are important. None of these are, you know, groundbreaking, earth shattering news. You know, you need to have some information about yourself, right? Tell people who you are, why you're doing what you're doing, why you're a good fit for them as a photographer. You can put up a portfolio, show off some of your best work, let people see what you're all about. If you're doing this professionally, you should have some information about the services or the products that you provide. And that, you know, that might include pricing information or if not direct pricing information, it probably includes some information to, you know, help people understand, are you a, you know, are you a $500 wedding photographer or a $5,000 wedding photographer or a $50,000 wedding photographer? And 
with that information, you know, people can then get in contact with you to find out more about your photography, to purchase your services, to purchase your products, you know, or to just learn more about you. The other thing where a website is important is that a frequently updated website will help boost your search engine rankings. It's pretty well known in the search engine world at this point that all other things being equal, a more frequently updated website is going to rank higher in the search engines than something that's been stale. You know, we've, we've all had that experience where we go to a website and, you know, we check out their news page or their blog or something and the, the last update is, you know, nine months or a year ago and it's like, eee. Is this person even still really relevant here? Are they still in business? What's up with that? So a website is a great way to, you know, convey that information. And by updating that website frequently, you're going to tell Google and the other search engines that, hey, I'm still doing this and I am relevant. And this is where the blog comes into play. People don't really follow blogs personally anymore like we did back in, say, 2008. But a blog is a great way to provide occasional chronological updates to your website, what's going on, and to give the search engines kind of that fresh information saying, hey, I'm still here, here's what I'm up to. And so I would say that your, your website, your photography website, should have a blog component integrated, and you should be updating that on a periodic basis, you know, at least once a month. The third thing that I wanted to talk about is the website platforms themselves. Much like we've seen social networks come and go, we've seen web platforms come and go in some cases over the last 5, 10, 15 years. And you've got a few options when it comes to your photography website. One is to use a general website platform. Uh, you know, probably the biggest and most well-known one is WordPress, uh, which you know you can either pay WordPress.com for their commercial hosted version there, or you can use the open source version through any number of independent web hosting companies. I'm a I'm a big fan of WP Engine, and I've I've got a special offer down below in the links uh, if you're looking for great WordPress hosting. But you know. You can pick your web host of choice and use WordPress. And you know, WordPress, you know, the biggest advantage to WordPress is that it's out there, it's open source, meaning you can move between hosting companies if you want. Um, it's super powerful. You can do pretty much anything you want with WordPress, which can also be one of its downsides, is that you know, there's a lot of ways that you can you know, maybe get into trouble with WordPress or uh, or have some issues if you don't configure it quite right. There are, uh, you know, smaller, uh, less flexible web platforms that provide, uh, you know, with that smallness and that less flexibility comes a little bit of stability maybe and, you know, less options to shoot yourself in the foot. Uh, Squarespace is one that's, that's fairly popular. There's some others out there as well. But, you know, a general web platform is one option for a photographer. Um, you know, another option, and I just helped a client uh, migrate her website to a platform like this recently, is to use a photo gallery hosting platform um, that can also kind of build out a whole website, right? So probably the most well-known of these are Smugmug and Zenfolio, uh, both of which have been around for quite a while. They focus on online photo galleries. You can also add other pages to those websites as well. Uh, and these sites are gonna offer integration out of the box with professional print labs as well. So if you want to sell print products, you can do that with those services. Another option for photographers is one of the niche photo companies that offers a web solution specifically for photographers. Uh, Photobiz is probably the most well known of these, but there's others out there as well. Uh, the advantage to something like this is it's 100% for photographers, uh, which means that, you know, you're not going to have a lot of superfluous options that you're not going to know what to do with, and there's not going to be, you know, 85 ways to do a given thing. Uh, the downside with something like this is that it is going to be a proprietary platform, and you know, if you have your website built through one of these services, uh, you're kind of at the whim of that service. If they decide they want to change their product offerings, if they decide they want to change their pricing, uh, you don't have a lot of options. You can't take your website from a service like that and migrate it to a different service, uh, you know, and keep substantially the same look and feel and content. 
there's not a single perfect solution here. It really depends on how much technical skill you have, how much you know, you want to DIY and do it yourself with your photography website versus let somebody else manage things. Um, and it also depends, frankly, on the amount of money you're willing to spend, right? Uh, the more money you spend, the nicer system you can get for your website, the more that other people will take care of it for you. You know, I, I talked about some web hosting options, for example, right? And I mean, you can find web hosts for like 99 cents a month, or $99 a month. <laughs> and there's a world of difference in between those. Uh, as a photographer, I don't think you should be spending 99 cents a month, probably, or $99 a month. I think you need to be somewhere in the middle. Um, but it, it really comes down to what your priorities are. And so what I would love to have you do, because I'm kind of curious to see where the discussion sits right now, is leave a comment down below and Tell me about your photography website experience. Um, are you happy with it? Do you love your website and the website experience that you have right now? If so, what do you love about it? You know, talk about what you're using and why it's so cool. Maybe you're a little frustrated. Maybe you're not real happy. Leave a, leave a comment about that as, below as well. And, you know, I might be able to chime in and help you out or give you some pointers. Uh, some other commenters might be able to do the same thing because, you know, love it or hate it, like it or not, even in 2023 with more social networks than ever, uh, you know, websites are still a thing. Search engines are still indexing websites. People are still trying to find you on the web. And as photographers, you ought to be there. You ought to be able to get found. And I'm here to help you out with that. So do leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear what you think. And I'll try to reply to as many of those as I can here in the coming days. Um, you know, you can always reach out to me via email directly with a question as well. And that's gonna, that link's gonna be down in the description. So if this kind of thing is interesting to you, do subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be back at you again in a few days with another topic. And until then, take care.